The Yo Dad Podcast. Welcome back to another episode of the Yeah That Podcast, hosted by yours truly, West Coast Robbie. How have you been? It's been a minute. It's been about two weeks now. You know, the homie, uh, you know, took a had a lot of I had a lot of things going on. First off, a lot of things going on. Uh, coming towards the end of the school year, and you know me being a hardcore, avid pops. I mean, my daughter's got a lot of a lot of things going on. But first and foremost, before we get there, how are y'all doing out there? I hope y'all are doing well. Homie's doing well. Well, been busy. Been busy as always. But you know what I mean? What else is new? You know what I'm saying? What else is new? Uh, quick recap. Last episode. Episode 67. Can we all just get along? We talked beef. Rap beef. Uh, and I don't even know what we talked about last time it's been that long it's been two weeks or two and a half weeks ish give or take some days but make sure you check that out as well as other past episodes everywhere podcasts are available man whether that's spotify apple podcasts pocket casts amazon music youtube pandora um serious satellite radio if that do people even still use that you know what i mean audible i'm on everything the, all you gotta do is type in the yeah that podcast and i noticed on the apple podcast platform that they have the old batch of podcasts so way back when i changed my distributor my distribution company or whatever what have you of the podcast so there's two sets if you search it on apple Podcasts, for example i know on apple Podcasts, it's like this i don't know if it is anywhere else but on apple Podcasts, if you type in the yet app podcast two of them pop up two selections and just click on the one that has the most updated episode because the other one does not and they have the same thumbnail so make sure you are up to date and you're selecting the right one if you search it on apple Podcasts, and you're like damn rob what, what's this man it's not even up to date you're on the wrong one you know what i'm saying but wherever podcasts are available you can you can check me out and if you're listening to this you already know just make sure you put your homies on and make sure you share a pod you support follow on instagram at instagram.com slash yeah that podcast and on tiktok at the yeah that podcast you know what i'm saying we post little shorts and uh or clips and uh cover art and memes and what have you but uh, make sure you show the support you know what i'm saying i appreciate y'all so much but it's been a minute how y'all how are y'all doing i hope y'all are doing well uh first and foremost let's i like to say r.i.p to the legendary bill walton recently passed uh, for those of you who don't know, Bill Walton is a basketball legend. He was, uh, as of recent, his latter latter years, was a an analyst for the NBA and a good one, man. He had, he had a legendary commentary, man. His voice was one of those ones that you were just, when you watched the game, you knew Bill Walton was commentating and he knew what he was talking about. Uh, he recently passed at the age of 71 years old. And he lost his battle with colon cancer. Colon cancer. Bill Walton was a legend, won championships at all levels from high school to college to the NBA. He won two championships with the legendary, under the legendary tutelage of John Wooden. You already know who John Wooden is for those avid college basketball, basketball fans. Legendary UCLA coach. You know what I'm saying? He won two championships as a UCLA Bruin, and then he won championships in the NBA with the Portland Trailblazers and the Boston Celtics. So condolences go to the Walton family. Uh, Bill Walton's son, Luke, played in the NBA briefly. He was on the Lakers, you know what I'm saying? Not as good as as his father, but, you know what I mean? Condolences go to the family. It has to be tough being like, the son or like the the kid of a legend you know what i'm saying like 
Luke Walton, for example, his dad, Bill Walton, you know what I mean? Legendary. Michael Jordan's son. I remember when he came, when he was playing basketball, he went to UCF, University of Central Florida. And that fool was nothing like his pops. But it's crazy. It has to be like, uh, that's a big shadow like draped over you. You know what I'm saying? Like same for like Bronny. You know what I mean? Like your your dad is the all-time leading scorer. You know what I mean? He's played in the league for 20 some years at a high level consistently. For you to be his son, expectations are are always going to be high on you. So it's got to be tough being a son or a child of a like a great like legendary athlete. Jerry Rice, you know what I mean? His son uh Braden, Brendan. He's on the Chargers too, by the way. I think he's gonna do well. But you know, what I mean he went super late in the draft. I mean went to USC, went super late. So it's gotta be tough. But once again, uh RP to the late great legendary Bill Walton. Crazy man, colon cancer. Colon cancer. You know colon cancer is uh it uh it took Patrick Swayze. That's how Patrick Swayze died too, man. I mean, colon cancer. So it's it's nuts, man. Cancer is a crazy thing, crazy thing. Um, did he die colon cancer, or prostate cancer? Gotta fact check that real quick. <clears throat> I think Patrick Swayze. Yeah, the cancer though. It's just oof. Let's see, I was just talking about Patrick Swayze. I put one of the homies onto the OG Roadhouse because we were talking about Roadhouse at work, and he saw the newest Roadhouse with Jake Gyllenhaal, and I was like, Yo, have you seen the old one? And he was like, nah. I was like, what? How have you not seen Roadhouse? I'm saying the original joint. You don't, so you don't get none of the little quirks and all the little recreations from the, the current movie. Like, you have to watch the old one. You know what I'm saying? And uh, he watched it. I texted him like Friday night or Saturday night to remind him because he told me, yo, remind me to watch Roadhouse. And I did. And then uh, he watched it. And he debriefed me at work. You know what I'm saying? We talked about it. And he was like, you can tell it was like an 80s, early 90s movie, which is it's 80s. But uh, and you can just tell how different the two times are from the old Roadhouse movie. There was a lot of women. You know what I mean, a lot of you know, I mean, there's nudity and, and just sex and all that stuff to the new Roadhouse where it's more like, oh, you can't show any of that stuff. It's more so got to be fighting type stuff. And then uh, he was like, well, uh, what's the dude's name? The main actor? Uh, that's not Kevin Bacon, right? And I sat there like, no, man, that's Patrick Swayze, dog. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, Patrick Swayze, Patrick Swayze. Yeah, I, I I know him from other stuff, too, man. He's like, like how did he die? And I told him. And I was like, I just can't remember right now. It's crazy. No, oh, dude. And my phone's listening. So, yeah, he had, so he had pancreatic cancer. So, excuse me, Patrick Swayze passed away from pancreatic cancer. Crazy. And, uh, yeah, but he was like, yeah, yeah, Patrick Swayze, man, he was, he's a good actor, man. I was like, yeah, he's he's legendary. Patrick Swayze is legendary, you know what I mean? Just like Bill Walton. Bill Walton, legendary, you know what I mean? Big hippie. He was a, <laughs> a big hippie, Grateful Dead fan. I mean, just a winner at all levels, like I said. So, RIP to the... To the legendary Bill Wallen, condolences to his family. So, uh, man, it's been a while since I've I've been on here. Uh, I don't even remember the the last time I talked about it. So, according to my notes, I got to do a Mother's Day recap. So, it was the last time I did an episode. It was pre Mother's Day. I've had, we've had two holidays since the last episode. It's crazy, but Mother's Day was well. I thought. You know I mean, it was very low key. You know, the older you get the less uh, materialistic thing, materialistic holidays and, and days get for you. I know I can't speak for everybody, but I know me personally and my wife. Nowadays, it's like, yeah, don't give me anything. Like, do not give me anything. And it's just like, if she gets me something, it's like, I thought I told you not to give me anything. It's not like we, we, we get into an argument or whatever, but it's just like, I told you not to give me anything type stuff but um damn mother's day was a few weeks ago what we get we got her some flowers she wanted and this is how you know you're you're getting older 
when it comes to like Mother's Day and stuff like that, the types of gifts you give are like gifts that youngsters and y'all young cats will be like, what? So, of course, it's Mother's Day. So you ask mothers or you get an inkling of what they like, what they want. So prior to Mother's Day, I remember being at work and I work around a lot of women. They were asking, oh, yeah, what are you going to get your wife for Mother's Day? And I, I mentioned some things, you know what I mean? And uh, so my wife wanted some Invisalign. So my youngest got Invisalign, done with them. So my wife was like, okay, it's my turn. So she's like, I want some Invisalign. And I, I want that for Mother's Day. And I was like, are you sure? She's like, yeah. I was like, all right. So we got her. So she got the Invisalign, started the process. And then we got her some, like, a, I got her a big bouquet of, of roses and then what else did we get her i don't think we got her any materialistic things but she wanted oh yeah so mother's day that's what it was mother's day fell so my youngest daughter uh my gymnast she decided to retire from doing gymnastics so her last meet her last meet was the states the state meet and it fell on Mother's Day. So my daughter said her gift, she's like, hopefully I can um, I can do real well, real good and place real well at the state meet. And that I can that can be your you'd be very proud and that will be your Mother's Day gift. So we, we told her, like, all right, we're going to be proud of you regardless. So that was. That was where we were for Mother's Day. Now I remember what we did. So then uh, the night before, Saturday night, so we had to go. It was about an hour and some change away in distance. So we had to be there at 8 o'clock. Athlete check-in was like 8 o'clock, and then like warm-ups was like 8.15 for like an 8.30 start time for the gymnast. So the night before, my, my wife was laying down or she was uh, asleep. So my youngest daughter, she has like one of those – green walls in her room like the ivy that you see in like stores with like a sign on it and you take pictures in front of it type shit so uh uh the night before i told the the girls i was like hey let's record a video in front of this wall and it's just you saying like being grateful for mom and everything she does like just i mean tell her how you feel what you want to say so each one of my daughters made a video I edited it and then uh, I edited it and then I made it all nice and fancy, whatever. And then I sent it to her uh, the morning of and she watched. It was tear jerker. You know what I'm saying? Tear jerker. You know what I'm saying? I was, I, was, I was proud. So we gave her that. Then she came downstairs to the, the roses and we ate a quick breakfast, went to the meet, which so for my daughter's final meet ever competing she's been doing gymnastics since she was she's what 14 now or she'll be 14 um wait, wait how old is she yeah yeah she'll be 14 so she'll be 14 in the summer and she's been doing gymnastics since she was what 10 8 7 something like that so she the reason for her stopping she said it's just not fun anymore so for her final meet she placed eighth overall all around in the state she's eighth all around in the beam event she's third in the state in the vault event she's fourth in the state and she got fucking cheated out of the floor which to me personally her floor routine is her is one of her best routines just a beast out there i mean beast powerful graceful and oh it was it was pissing me off me and my oldest were sitting there and she ended up getting so she had um during her routine she had like probably like one movement where she kind of like wasn't straight up she had like leaned a little bit on landing or doing something and other than that, that was it. And the judge gave her, the judges gave her a 9.3 or some bullshit like that. 
Now, the girls prior to her, I was telling my wife, I was like, they're being pretty generous with the scores. There was girls out there who were who were going, who went before my daughter, who were booty, garbage. Routines were garbage, and they were getting nine fives, nine sixes. And I was like, or nine fours and nine fives. And I was like, okay, well, Bird's about to get a nine six right now, nine seven. She got a nine three, and I lost my mind. So I'm like, what? Like, are you serious? So then girls who went after her were just not even as good. And I'm not even being biased. It's just a fact of the matter. It's the principle. And it was just like, there was a girl who got like a 9.6, a one that got a 9.7. One girl got a 9.9. And I was like, what are, are you serious? But it's crazy because I don't like to pull the race car thing. But we deal with that a lot in gymnastics. And it's a fact. My daughter... So she, when it's, when it was gymnastic season, she just wore her natural hair. So she has the Afro and, you know, a lot of the, uh, ethnic girls, they have like a more hip hop based or more urban floor routine. Now the floor routine has to be what 30 to 30 seconds to a minute of instrumentals, no words. And usually it's the same, like the girls will play like the same, have the same generic song, or whatever but my daughter's was nice it was a tight song and routine was nice she had a little Nicki Minaj in there she had it was nice her routine is solid but I don't know I just felt as if she, like she was getting discounted because she was black and every girl who went prior to her was a white girl whose routine was terrible and it wasn't terrible but wasn't as good and they were getting scores that were higher than her so after she she did her routine i was watching i was nitpicking now she moved to another event and i'm watching because we're sitting right by the floor and me and my oldest daughter are watching and i'm like let's see what this girl gets there was one girl who was doing the floor routine and the floor routine for those of you who don't know that's the one you're down like and you're doing like all the flips and you're running from side to side that's the floor routine there was one girl who forgot her routine twice during the routine. Like she started and was like, uh, paused, went again, did a pass. A pass is where you go from one corner to the other and got there and was like, uh, and then remembered, boom, 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 went and got like a 9.6 or some shit. And I was like, this is bullshit. This is straight bullshit. And I just... It's just shit like that, that it's just upsetting. It's upsetting. It's a shame. And you look at the judges and it was two judges for the floor routine. It was like an older lady and like a bigger lady. And it was just like, oh, it's I know it's you. It's you. The one with the with the stupid ass ears on your head. Like, ugh. it's just a shame to do that. Like, why are why did you do that? Are you seriously telling me this simple routine that this girl just did? where she forgot halfway through her routine twice. She forgot her routine twice. And then it was sloppy at that was better than my daughter's. Like, are you, come on, man, come on. It was just, it was just sad to see and it was upsetting. So I was just happy that she, um, she was done. She was happy with her results. She placed, like I said, top five in two events, got screwed out of the floor routine. And then that one girl that got the 9.9, .9, that was ridiculous. I've never seen a 9.9. .9. So you mean to tell me that was a perfect routine, which it wasn't. I wasn't being biased either. I'm not being biased. Like It wasn't a perfect routine. Like, are you kidding me? And it was simple. Oh, God. It's, thinking about it right now is just making me mad again. But it's just a shame that that happens in in children's sports or to this. Like, oh, let's get rid of that fucking prejudice and the the racism and, and shit like that. It's fucking stupid. Uncalled for, man. Goodness. But yeah. Um, so yeah, Mother's Day. So after every gymnastics meet, we we go with two other girls and their families and we eat at Red Robin afterwards. And then um, <clears throat> so that's what we did after the meet. And then after we ate, we smashed like, we smashed some food. I sm I got it like a Red Robin's like our spot too. I like it. I like Red Robin. But we we went there. I got a I got a what I get? 
I got some meal and then I got an extra burger and then you get like the, the endless fries. Man, I smash. So then we, we spent time there, said bye to them, got home and crashed, went straight to sleep, got up. I didn't know what time it was. I thought it was the morning because it was still like light, but it was looked like it was it was dusk, but it looked like morning when the sun was coming up. I didn't know what time it was. And then uh, my wife wanted cake for dinner. So I, I baked her a, a chocolate cake. We had that with ice cream and then we watched a movie. What movie did we watch? I forgot what movie we watched, but I think it was kind of underwhelming. And uh, that's how we spent Mother's Day. Yeah, that's how we spent Mother's Day. So it was just a low key, a low key Mother's Day, but it was it was good. Um, <laughs> it's been a while since I did the last episode, like I said. So that was Mother's Day, and then since that day, we had two choir performances. We had two spring concert performances for my daughters. They're both in choir, one in high school, one in middle school, and. Um, both went well. I'm I'm just at that point in my life when I'm so I'm the dad that's recording, of course. And and I'm recording them. I'm watching through my phone or whatever and I'm zooming. And then when they have solos, it's just like, oh my God. <sighs> You're fighting tears. I'm just that dad now, man. I'm I mean just proud and sappy. But both my daughters did very well. I'm very proud of them. And then um we had my oldest daughter her prep soccer season wrapped up last week last thursday last thursday yeah last thursday which was crazy no last friday excuse me last friday which was crazy because we were we were playing one of our our local rivals and they're a top team i think in our in our class we're 4a and they're number one and we played them earlier in the year This is when we, our team really didn't know how to play with each other. And they beat us 3-0, 4-0, something like that. So, you know, they've always gotten the the better of us over the past years. Since my daughter's been in high school, we haven't beat them. I think my daughter was the only girl to score on this team. And this was a a year or two ago. I don't know what happened last year because I was was gone. I was deployed. But uh, I remember my daughter scored two goals and had the the parents shook because I remember a couple of parents we know because their kids on the opposing team play with my daughter at in the club on the club team so they're like oh we were were we like oh she was she was starting to get hot and she scored them two goals and we're like oh shoot but we ended up losing that game um but anyway we played that team and you know we we were slept on I'm telling y'all right now, we were slept on as a as a team. So our season started off rocky. Our prep soccer season started off rocky. And then we lost, well, I think we lost our first four games, five games, something like that. After our final loss, we won every single game after that. Every single game. We won eight games in a row. But at the same time, you know, I followed the little local sports things that follows like the soccer around the region not a mention of us not a mention of of the the streak how we have scored goals on people how we shut girls out our teams out not a peep no credit no love no nothing so i'm like all right cool we played um we played a we played in the quarterfinals. We're in the playoffs, so we were in the quarterfinals, and the winner plays this the aforementioned team I was telling you about, the number one team in the semis to go to the to the regional championship and then to the state tourney. So all right, we're in the quarterfinals. I was like, all right, boom, let's go. Let's we get out here and do what we gotta do. We end up winning that game 6-0. I'm like, bet, bet. Street continues. Now we about to go and we about to shock the region right now because people are assuming that this team's going to whoop us because they they always get the better hand of us they, the upper hand they always they always end up beating us and, and shutting us out so the girls mentally are always defeated like ah we're playing whoop whoop we're playing them like ah they're gonna beat us they're gonna beat us so my daughter 
she mentioned that and I told her, I was like, the the day of the game, I was like, if you go in with that mentality, you've already lost. If you and your teammates are like, dang, we're playing them, uh, wow, da, 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 whatever, woo, woo, then you already lost. Any team can be beat. Any team, whether that's a pro team, a semi-pro team, if they're number one, if they're whatever, whatever, any team can lose on any day. So just go in there and play y'all's game. So we went into the game. Zero, zero. I mean, game's going and we're pressing them. They were their Their stars and whomever were getting shut down. We were driving, shooting. Just the ball wasn't going in. We were pressing them. And then all of a sudden, oh, weather delay. Lightning has was seen. So we got we got postponed for about an hour and a half. So while we were postponed, you know, we were talking to some of the parents of the opposing team while we we're in a parking lot. And a, a lot of them were like, uh, we didn't expect we didn't expect all this pressure from y'all. Like y'all are really pressuring us. One of the one of the dads I was talking to, he was like, all y'all got it. All Warhill has to do is kick this ball and let their forward go get it. And like our defenders will miss it and she'll get it because she's like super fast. I was like, oh, that's my daughter. She's like, she's like yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Like, yeah. All they got to do is kick it to her and it's a wrap because they're going to miss it. So we ended up game starts back up and then we end up scoring. Boom. One zero. We are we're up. Ooh, I'm extra loud. I got my umbrella. I'm banging on the bleachers. Banging. We're just extra hype, extra loud. So then we're going. We're going. Then uh, what happened? Was the oh, so then we're going. There are they're driving. There was a controversial call from the ref, which the ref, the whole game was trash. He was making stupid calls. And it was just like, what are you doing, man? Like, do you know what you're calling? Like, do you even know what this sport is? Like, like, do you have you played this sport? Like, what are you doing? Some of the calls he was making was like, what? It, what? What? How is that a foul? But anyways, so one in particular, we're up one zero beating this team that no one expected. So we're like, OK, boom. We want to shock. We won't shock the region. They sleeping on us. And it's apparent. It's evident. So there was one instance where they kicked the ball and it's a scramble by our goalie. Our goalie. If the goalie has one hand on the ball, a player can kick the ball out of her hand or whatever, whatever. And, and still fair game. Our keeper had two hands on the ball. Girl kicked the ball out of her hand, kicked it in the goal counted it four defender four of our defenders the keeper were right there yelling at the the ref our coach is on the sideline like what are you talking about what were you doing that's not a goal blah, blah, blah. the dude goes and talks to the ar and he's like no no they're they had their little conference or whatever and he counts the goal and we're like what like oh you are ass bro you are ass straight up you are garbage so the game continues on. Regular time, full time, 1-1. One, one. We go to OT. We go to double overtime. At the end of double overtime, there's a corner kick for them. So I'm like, okay, just mark up. You know what I mean? And then we'll just go in a triple. We'll just, we'll just let it ride. We'll keep riding. Corner kick. Ball curves perfectly. They tip it in. They win at the end of the game heartbreaker heartbreaker which we should never been in that situation in the first place we won the game that call screwed us over which is it's unfortunate but uh even the opposing team the opposing high school's coach said that we won the game he knew he's like he knew that that call was bs and we won so now that said team plays today in the championship game against another team who our last defeat, like two months ago, where they beat us 1-0, which we should have won that game, but we were just now hitting our stride. But I know for certain, if we were to play that team that beat us 1-0 two months ago, we would have definitely beat them tonight. Definitely. And we would have went going to the state, state attorney. But 
Uh, but yeah, it was a heartbreaker. It was a heartbreaker for that. The a heartbreaking way to end like the seniors soccer career and then for the season to end because we were we were rolling oh god and just because the ref man it's crazy freaking crazy but uh yeah that that happened the other day and then we had memorial day man memorial day was a few days ago and it was real chill we had a long weekend work wise i was off friday and monday gotta love those long weekends and i didn't do much man i I didn't do much i was i was down here playing my game kicking it chilling did a lot of drinking you know what i'm saying is what it is did a lot of drinking me and my wife and then on memorial day uh i didn't think we were going to be able to do anything on memorial day because when i woke up um it was pouring rain it was storming i was like damn what a way what a memorial day but uh we went the night before we went to the movies, my wife and I, and we went and watched uh, The Strangers. Um, for those of you who have seen the original Strangers with Liv Tyler and then like the part two, they're pretty good. They're not bad. They're not bad. So the new Strangers is called Strangers Chapter One. Me seeing that title, I thought it was going to be a prequel. You know what I mean? Trying to or uh, explaining why and why the people do what they do like how they got into that or whatever all it is is a remake of the first one and man it was terrible holy shit it was terrible the new strangers is terrible so if you want to if you are into horror movies i'm into horror movies or thrillers and all that the new strangers is terrible it was predictable and it was the acting wasn't good and it it was just oh it wasn't good like i was in there like come on man what what what's going on here like what's going on here and then my wife she doesn't chat during movies like we'll say little things here and there but she doesn't really chat during movies we were chatting back and forth about the movie because it was just terrible gosh it was terrible and then you know we have to stay whenever we see a movie we wait till I Google to see if there's end credits or mid credits. And there are with this one, with the strangers chapter one. And it just alludes to them starting a a new trilogy with the strangers. And I just hope it it gets better because this movie strangers chapter one was not good. Was not good. I mean, the original was way better and all it was, was a remake. But anyways, Memorial day. So Memorial Day, it was storming. Sorry, I'm all over the place, but whatever. I mean, whatever. But Memorial Day, I woke up and it was storming. I was like, damn, what a way to end the Memorial Weekend, the long weekend. But then it stopped around 10 30, 11 o'clock in the morning. And uh, we were just kicking it. We just, we we're going to plan, we we're going to grill some shit around here. But um, my homie, the big homie across the street, my neighbor, he said he had grilled or hooked up some burgers and some dogs. So my wife or my family and I, we went over there and uh, the kids were all kicking it outside playing. And then the adults, we were in there. There was another family over there and we were in there just chopping it up, taking shots, uh, eat, <laughs> eating. It was a good time and it was a real good chill time. And, you know, the older I get. That's all I'm about is just chilling. I ain't got to do nothing spectacular. I ain't got to go out to the club. I ain't got to do nothing like that. I'm all about kicking it. I'm all about peace and and just, you know what I mean? Living a simple kind of life because I'm a simple kind of man. You know what I mean, so Memorial Day was good. And thus brings us caught back here and we're all caught up now, right? We're all caught up. Two holidays down since the last pod. So now we're back. <sighs> Hope y'all are doing good. I hope y'all Memorial Day was good. If you had or if you knew someone who served and who passed away, I hope you poured out a little something for them. I poured out some uh, some beverages for some for the people who we lost, who served the country, uh, gave their lives for this country and to, and to protect this country and allow people to do what they do around here, despite it being stupid ass shit. You know what I'm saying? People do stupid shit. Um, let's see what else we got on my notes, man. I sometimes oh, I just can't stand people, man. 
I cannot stand people sometimes, man. So with that being said, so my wife, <clears throat> she works with like uh, special needs kids. So like those who need a little extra attention in schools and whatnot. So she works for the school district. She goes to uh, several different schools and she checks on students. Those are in broken homes, those who need special assistance, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, they do a lot of good stuff for the kids, the different schools and the program. So like they go on field trips, they go to the movies, they do a lot of stuff, you know what I mean? Help them, help them uh, thrive socially and in, in life, et cetera. So this, so one school took some kids to a, a park and there was a, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A state park. It was a state park. So, you know, the kids are there. They're grilling with the teacher, a couple teachers. And while they were there, they're, they, you know, they weren't bothering anybody. Some of the kids were in a trail, like going, walking the trails. But there's an adult, I mean, supervising them. I mean, while another adult with other kids grilling, they're playing games around. I mean, having a good time. I mean, being outside of the school, you know, just getting out and just enjoying enjoying life or whatever so so tell me why these kids are at the park minding their own business and a karen calls the park ranger saying that there are people here who shouldn't be here and this bothers me because one the karen is white of course and the kids weren't bothering anyone, weren't bothering her, weren't bothering anything. They weren't breaking anything. They weren't destroying anything in nature with the trees. And they were just minding their own business, walking trails, you know, doing what kids do, exploring in the woods. You know what I mean? With an adult near, adult present. But I guess she walks this trail or she walks the park however many times a week, whatever see some black kids she doesn't recognize feels uncomfortable calls a park ranger saying oh yeah there's people here who who don't need to be here like what what do you mean it's a park it's a public park a state park anybody can go it's not your park it's anybody's park and their kids like are they bothering you like what what was the what was the deal so the park ranger gets the call comes checks it out and he tells the lady like lady what do you want me to do about it they're kids they're not bothering anybody and it's a park like come on and it's just shit like that that is just disgusting to me it's disgusting like like what they're obviously Oh, it's just, I don't know, it's, it's sad. My wife was like, I'm so glad I wasn't there because I would have bit her head off. And I was like, yeah, you weren't there for a reason. You weren't there for a reason. But it's, it's stuff like that. It's just despicable, man. Despicable. What? Because you, you see these black kids that you don't normally see in a park, enjoying the park, doing what you're doing. It's an issue. Why? Because they're black. But if they were little white kids, would you still have called the park ranger? It's a fucking shame, man. It's a shame. And if the world continues going in this direction, man, I don't know. I don't know what can save it. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what can save it. But it's just stuff like that, man. And, you know, you you want nothing but positivity. You want your kids to grow up in a nice, safe world, a nice, safe environment. But dealing with issues like that, it's it's kind of tough. Like it's not a, it's not a perfect world. It's not a safe world. So make sure you educate your children, your young ones about the people in the world, about the situations. Like I have recently talked to my daughter. So I was like, hey, y'all are getting older and understand that the older you get, that you may be dealing with some adversities such as prejudice. Like not everybody in this world is going to be nice and be open to you. You can be nice, but. It won't be reciprocated. You know what I mean? So it's, make sure you're educating your your young ones about that stuff, man. Because it's it's unfortunate that we do got to deal with shit like that. 
Um, and that's what causes beef, man. I mean, just just unnecessary hate and disregard for any, just people, period. It's just stupid. But speaking of beef, you know, we had the we had a music beef over the past two weeks or the past month or so or whatever. You know, King Kendrick, you know what I'm talking about. But uh, shout out to Kendrick, man. That fool killed the charts. That f- shout out to him for removing the copyright from from not like us on YouTube so that people who use the video for their content creation can get paid and monetized for it. That was huge. I saw that and was like, man, that shit, that is huge. Uh, there's a, a, a couple of content creators who shouted him out, shouted Kendrick out saying, man, they made so much money that it changed their lives because of it. That's crazy, man. Crazy. So shout out to Kendrick Lamar for doing stuff like that. Um, you know, Kendrick won the beef. I don't care what anybody says. That fool Drake went and hid. And then he jumped on that track. You know, he's since showed face since going into hiding. And he jumped on that garbage ass track with with old girl who's not sexy, but on sexy reds track which is garbage that track is so trash you cannot say it's a fire track man but shout out to drake for jumping on the bbl drizzy uh beat on that track that's tight that he did that shit acknowledging that shit but uh oh sexy red is garbage man holy smokes y'all we gotta stop amping up people who are garbage man but yeah beef i mean that beef started a bunch of different beefs you know game called out rick ross and rick ross hasn't said anything or hasn't replied back and even people who aren't in beef or aren't like rappers are beefing so you had like the kendrick versus drake then you had chris brown and quavo then you had uh or drake versus everybody then you have Shaq versus Shannon Sharp. <laughs> Shaq, for those of you who didn't know, Shaq released a diss track, rap track, getting at Shannon Sharp over some some things that Shannon Sharp said about Shaq or vice versa. And so Shaq released a, a rap track addressing Shannon Sharp. Shannon Sharp then came back. He didn't drop a track, but he replied to the track on one of the, on his uh, Up All Night or whatever that podcast he has with uh, Chad Johnson. And he said some real shit. Kind of got at Shaq too, man. It's just funny. Like everybody's jumping on the beef train. They just need to be just need to be cool, man. You understand? I'm saying good vibes only. I'm saying good vibes only. But uh. Are you done with the beef? Are you tired of this beef shit? I kind of think I am. Kind of over the, the beef stuff. And since YG has dropped the track, getting at Drake. You know what I mean? So it's it's not going to die down anytime soon, especially with summer approaching too, man. Um, What else? Uh, The Roast of Tom Brady. Watch that. That was funny. It was a little too long, I thought. But it was funny, though. Shout out to everybody involved. Shout out to Kevin Hart, man. He was a good uh, master of ceremonies. Really held stuff down. Really directed the flow of the roast, the programming. Boo to Netflix for taking out the booing of Kim K. Like, we all saw it. We all heard it. That she got booed. And the way Kevin Hart kind of like, hey, hey, all right, all right. And then allowed her to continue on with her skit it was like all right cool but for netflix to edit it out like why what y'all what y'all edit that out for it's a roast so are y'all gonna edit out some other obscenities that are being seen no but y'all edited out the booing of kim kardashian somewhat there go that privilege shit again man there go that privilege shit again but all in all that the roast was good man who you think was the best roaster up there? Me personally, I liked uh, I liked Drew Bledsoe, man. I thought Drew Bledsoe was funny. He was funny. Um, Gronk's a fucking maniac. What's wrong with him? Uh, Julian Edelman was funny. 
Um, oh, Sam J. <laughs> Funny. Hilarious. If you haven't seen the, the Roast of Tom Brady, if you like Roast, you should check it out. I'm pretty sure everybody's seen it. You know, I'm, I'm just now getting back to the podcast. I mean, I've been gone for a few weeks, but you know what I'm saying? But check it out if you haven't. It's on Netflix. Uh, what else we got? Oh, so I saw this post the other day where it said they're doing it or AI is working with with bots to hold on, let me pull it up to do a head swap, which I thought was crazy. Let's see. It says it's right here. Yeah, that BrainBridge is pioneering the development of the world's inaugural head transplant system, which is nuts. BrainBridge is pioneering the development of the world's inaugural head transplant system. That is fucking wild to me. So this groundbreaking innovation signifies a significant milestone in neuroscience, human engineering and AI. So what they're planning on doing is working it to where you have two bodies and say one person is dying or or cancer or whatever. And the other person, I don't know. You know what? I don't even know what the logic or how they're going to pull this off, but it's literally swapping heads. Yeah, that's crazy. That is crazy. Swapping heads. People took the movie Face Off and was like, oh, I can do that. That shit is nuts, man. You just got to, I don't know, swapping heads. It's crazy. And it's like, I saw another post where the Chinese have damn near come up with, with a cure for diabetes. So we can come up with a cure for diabetes and we're getting close to swapping heads. Where's that cure for cancer at? I'll wait. Where is the cure for cancer at? And it's a shame because all this, there's a cure for cancer. There's a cure for AIDS. There's a cure for HIV, but you gotta have a big money to get it. And if they have a cure for all that shit, Big Pharma will take a big hit because they wouldn't be able to put out their fucking, their chemicals dealing with whatever side effects they do to subdue it. You know what I'm saying? That shit is fucked up, man. We live in a fucked up world, man. Fucked up world. Uh... Also saw an interesting post right here. That did you know that your post that Meta is using your Instagram and Facebook photos to train its AI models? I repeat, Meta is using your Instagram and Facebook photos to train its AI models. What do you mean by that, bro? What do you mean? So Meta's chief product officer, Chris Cox, told that it uses publicly available photos and text from the platforms to train its next, oh, excuse me, to train its text to image generator model called Emu. We don't train on private stuff. We don't train on stuff that people share with their friends. We do train on things that are public, he said. Hmm. Meta's text to image model can produce really amazing quality images because Instagram has many photos of art, fashion, culture, and also just images of people and us. Cox added. That, that's, that was weird how they, they put that together. It seemed like there was supposed to be more. But anyways, users can create images on Meta AI by typing a prompt starting with the word image and it will generate four images according to its website. AI models need to be fed and trained on data for them to be effective. It's been a a contentious issue as there's almost no way to prevent copyrighted content from being scraped from the internet 
and used to create an LLM. Meaning in layman's terms, they take your photos, they take your text or whatever, and they use it to train the AI model. So for example, take me for example, if someone types, oh, image, uh, tall, dark, handsome, black man with a beard. They'll take my gen, my photo that they use to train the AI. And that's how they base their AI generated photo of that description based off my picture. So even if it's copyrighted, you've seen that it's hard to prevent copywritten material from getting scraped off the internet and using being used as AI. Like, like what, what are we able to secure? What are we able to lock down? You know what I mean? Everything's being used nowadays. Nuts. Oh, and, oh, and LLM stands for large language models. So LLMs are very large, deep learning models that are pre-trained on vast amounts of data. That's what an LLM is. So if you see an AI image that looks similar to you, wonder where they got it from. They probably got it from you on some real shit. Oh, and lastly, I don't know. I don't know why this, this has been popping up a lot and people have been talking about it a lot. Um, yo, that. So the ends of bread, ends of loaves of bread, right? The end pieces. People dislike them. You know what I mean? The heel, they're known as the heel or the butt, depending on depending on where you're from or what you call it or whatever. But it is actually the end piece of bread is commonly called the heel, according to the Cambridge Dictionary. <laughs> However, other informal terms include butt or end piece. So the butt, the heel, the end piece, whatever you want to call it, and loaf of bread, it's been, it's been, I don't know, trending lately, I guess you can say, because people, somebody posted a picture. I forgot who it was. Damn, I should have saved it. A celebrity posted a picture and they had to make a sandwich with the two end pieces, which is the thought of that is like, ugh. But I, Personally, my daughters are the same way. They're like, "Ugh, I don't want this," and they'll throw it away. Like, Give me that. That's a perfectly good piece of bread, man. But that's a perfect piece of bread. The end piece, the heel, is a perfectly good piece of bread for sandwiches. Think about it. You have a bun, a, a hamburger bun, right? You have the bottom piece, then you have like the top piece. You know what I'm saying? And that top piece is the top. You know what I mean, you have your burger, your lettuce, your cheese, whatever, your impossible burger, your chicken patty, whatever it is. You have it sitting on that bottom piece of the bun, the bottom bun, and then you stack it and whatever, and then you top it off with the top piece that has like the little dome cover piece. You know what I'm saying? Now take the the heel of the bread, the loaves of bread. It's the same thing. It's just shaped. It's shaped. It has a little curve. You know what I'm saying? And it's a perfect topper, man. So next time you're making a sandwich, you got your little regular slice of bread. Take that little heel piece. You know what I'm saying? Throw it on top. Boom. You got your top right there. Boom. Perfectly good piece of bread right there. You know what I'm saying? I, I personally don't mind the heel or the end piece or whatever you want to call it. I don't mind it. Like I said, it's like the perfect topper for a sandwich or a, a burger that you're using slices of bread. Don't trip on that too. If you're tripping on that, you ain't never been, in, you've never struggled before. You know what I'm saying? If you don't know about making or eating burgers with slices of bread, you don't know what the struggle is. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, we're going to end it right here, man. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to all the end pieces of bread eaters, lovers. I'm saying all slices of bread are made equal. You know what I'm saying? Some are just different looking than others, but it's all the same. It's all bread. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> but we're going to wrap it up here, man. Thank y'all for listening. As always, make sure you support the podcast by you by following on Instagram, 
by following on TikTok, by subscribing on YouTube, liking, commenting, rating the podcast on whatever platform you listen to this on, commenting the whole nine yards. If you want to donate, there's a link in the show notes. You can donate. But I appreciate y'all as always. For those of you who made it this far, you know, I love y'all. Big salute to y'all. Man, they about to make me a sandwich right now. You know what I'm saying? I already ate the end pieces out of my shit, though. You know what I'm saying? My end pieces are gone. I still a loaf of bread upstairs in my pantry, but the two end pieces are gone because my girls like to grab the slices and then leave the end pieces. So I was like, you know what I'm saying? I got them. I'm saying I like them. But anyways, thank y'all for listening. Thanks y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in. Until the next episode, this is Homie West Coast Rob signing out. Yeah, Dad, I appreciate y'all, man. Till the next episode, love y'all. Yeah, Dad. The Yeah, Dad podcast.